In this video, I'm going to be showing you how I made this Western Red Cedar firewood storage unit, firewood holder. It holds my firewood. It's going to keep it dry with the roof and the overhangs, but with the open concept, plenty of air is going to be able to get in and dry it out. So let's get into how I did it. The majority of this project is made from Western Red Cedar. However, I'm starting with making the base and I made that from pressure treated wood since it will be in direct contact with the ground. I flipped out the wings on my miter saw stand and started by cutting down two runners for the base. Next, I started cutting the baseboards that will make up the deck. For these, I'm leaving the back cut at a 90 degree, but I wanted the fronts to have a bevel on them since they will be facing the front of the holder. To make these cuts, I beveled my motor saw head, making sure to move out the fence wing on the saw so it wouldn't interfere with the motor whenever I made the cut. Then I made the cuts. After making the bevel, I'd move the second board down, switch the head back to a 90, and make the second cut. To start assembling, I positioned one of the deck pieces on one end, and after making sure it was square to the bottom runners, I used a pre-drill and screws to attach it. I repeated the steps on the other side, again, making sure all sides were square to the runners. Then I filled in the middle, spacing the deck boards evenly across. To make this task quicker, I cut two spacers to size and moved them along as I was attaching the boards. And now that these boards are in place, you can see that the bevel on the front will come in handy. Instead of having a hard 90 degree corner, it will drop to a point for a foot or hand entering the front of the unit. The base is now done. Let's move on to making the body of the unit. I started by cutting all of the boards needed to make up one side. For this entire portion, I went with Western Red Cedar as my material choice. One, it's beautiful wood in my opinion, but it's natural weather and rot resistant qualities make it a top choice for any outdoor project. Plus, I love how extremely lightweight it is. I do have a set of plans over on my website for this project, which includes a material shopping list as well as a full cut list. There's a link for you down in the description. After getting my pieces for two sides cut, I started assembling them. I'm using Type On 3 on all of the joints in this build. <laughs> and that's my friend Erin saying hello. She's in the shop helping me prepare for a fun but very big project I have coming up. Of course, if you've been following me on Instagram, then you'll already know what it is. I like using wood glue, even on more construction projects like this one, because of the added rigidity it gives the entire structure. And I went with Type On 3 because it's waterproof, and of course this will be housed outside. Once I attached the front and the cross members, I attached the back. There was a small gap when I went to attach the second cross member, and this is from the 2x4s just being slightly warped. To fix this, I used a clamp to draw it in flush to that cross member before I sink in a few screws. I set the side down on the ground so that I could next attach a second 2x4 to the back framing member. You'll notice this one is slightly shorter and this is so I can have a shelf to attach a cross member to connect the two sides. With those made, I next laid down some more wood glue and attached the two sides in their respected places. Note that this woodshed is plenty big for a Texas winter, but those of you in the colder climates might need a much bigger unit. If that's the case, you can easily keep the majority of the build the same, but make the base longer and push out the sides so that you end up with the same height as this one, but just much wider. Now that the sides are in their place, I moved to the top and connected them with that cross brace. And since I'm going with an angled back roof, I first ripped a bevel on this 2x4 over on my table saw so that it would match the angle of the sides. Moving back up to the top, I capped off both sides with one last piece. Again, the board had just a slight curve to it, so to get it flushed, I used another clamp to make it bend to my will instead of its own. I'm not funny. <laughs> I placed these horizontal framing members here because I knew I wanted to add a shelf to the woodshed to give myself a way to separate the smaller starting size sticks from the larger logs. To complete the shelf, I took a measurement across the front, then ripped down a 2x4 to attach. The important thing here is to get it level with the existing boards that will make up the side supports for the shelf. And to do this, I used whatever was close at hand, which was my speed square. But even a straight scrap board would work. 
To secure it, I pre-drilled and toenailed in a few screws, but another option would be to use a pocket hole jig. Now to make the shelf. I went with 3 quarter inch plywood. However, if you don't like the look, then you could easily use some one by cedar boards and create a slatted shelf here. Since I'm using plywood, I first cut myself a piece long enough and wide enough to make up the shelf, then use my track saw to cut this portion out of a larger sheet. As you can see, my workbench is pretty messy right now, and instead of cleaning it off to rotate the sheet and reach the other side, I simply climbed on top in order to reach the saw. Next, I rotated the track for the saw and made the second cut for the shelf. After getting the body of the shelf cut, I laid out the corners where it would need to fit around the 2x4s and then used a jigsaw to make the actual cuts. Ha! First time! After making sure the shelf would indeed fit in place, I lifted it up and applied the glue, then threw in a few screws. So this top portion will be for storing smaller pieces, but I found with separating wood and starting fires that there's really three stages. Super small stuff like bark and thinner pieces for the very start of a fire, the stuff that is a little bit thicker to throw on top of that to build it up some, and then the logs that will be thrown on top of that to really keep it going. So to create a third compartment, I threw in a divider on this top shelf. Once I cut it out and found the center of that 2x4, I glued and then screwed it into place. And that, my friends, is the bones of the unit done. Let's move on to making it look pretty. The plan is to slat all three sides, leaving the front open, of course. <laughs> to hide the end grain of the slats, I first attached a board to the back to act as trim. This not only covers the back 2x4s, but also overhangs the side of the unit just enough to cover the slats I'll be attaching next. In fact, I use the slat to help line up the overhang of this trim board. Once I was in place, I started cutting all of my slats. To do this, I figured out how long the side slats needed to be and then set up a stop block at the miter saw to make cutting all of these repeatable cuts quick. Now that I'm attaching the slats, you'll see how that back trim board I placed will come in handy. I could take the slats and butt them up against the back side of the board and then stick it in place. So the trim board creates a hard stop for aligning all of these slats on the same line. And to attach them, I'm once again using Type Bond 3 on the areas that would connect with the framing and then my 16 gauge Makita Brad nailer. Something else you can do to make the step go quicker is cut a spacer to place in between each slot so that you don't have to measure each and every time. If you do this, I would recommend checking for level on your unit before attaching the first slot. Next, it was the same process, but repeated with longer cut on the back and then repeated for a third time over on the second side. And I made sure to keep the same spacer as I did on the first side to also keep the spacing consistent. When I was in the design phase for this project, I modeled two different versions, the slotted version and a fully closed up version. I was actually leaning towards the fully closed version, thinking it would help keep the wood dry, and that's best. However, I asked my Instagram audience for their opinion, and it was pointed out that if I were storing green wood, it would need plenty of air movement to actually dry it out. So that is the deciding factor behind going with this open design. With those in place, I came back to trim the front to hide the end grain of the slats, just like I did on the backside earlier. All right, let's move on to the roof. I'm going with a corrugated roof that looks like metal, but it's actually a silver painted polycarbonate material made by Tough Tex. And you can find this stuff at the big box store, so it's readily available. I decided to leave more than normal to try to protect the wood a tad more and hopefully keep it dry even whenever it rains. Once decided, I cut all the panels down to the same height using my jigsaw. And as you can see, the stuff cuts very quick and very easy. Then I used a special roofing screw that has a rubber washer on them to secure it to the unit. These washers seat around the screw head, creating a seal around the hole that you made to prevent water from getting in. 
And at this point, I actually thought I was done with it. However, once I started staging the woodshed to take photos, this front shelf edge really caught my attention in a negative way. I really thought the plywood end grain took away the prettiness of the cedar body. So I just very quickly added in two more pieces of trim to hide it. And there we go. That is much better. All right, and the last step is to apply a finish. Now, with it being built out of cedar, you could always leave it raw and let it naturally patina into the beautiful gray that cedar does over time. However, I chose to apply an exterior stain put out by General Finishes in the color of cedar. This is one of their 450 stains, which has an exterior rated pigment and resin system that provides good adhesion and durability. It can be applied by a brush or even spraying it on. However, I went with a roller since the majority of the surfaces on this unit are flat. And then I just came back with a brush to get all of the in-betweens. This is my first time using this finish and something I'm really loving is that it doesn't require a top coat. However, if you do want more protection, then you could always apply a few coats of the 450 clear top coat as well. All right, all right, and that is really it. Now it's time to load this thing up, get it out of the shop and moved onto the property where I'm actually gonna be keeping it. With the unit being so big, it's actually pretty light and easy to move around if you have two people on hand. Easy, easy. I actually have a beautiful shed on my property that I plan on converting into a tiny home. And on one side, there's a very spacious overhang that the wood rack seemed to fit perfect in. And you can't see it in the frame, but I also moved a fire pit close to the area so that whoever's staying in it can enjoy a nice fire in the evening time. Now this location actually worked out better than planned, but with the overhang of the roof, I think the unit would be okay if it wasn't under a covered area. Anyways, I hope that you guys enjoyed it. It turned out way better than what, uh, what I was expecting. So don't forget if you would like to build your own, I do have a set of plans. And I think that's it for this one. I'll see you next time.